Hi and welcome to a rather short video. Today we're just going to unbox this turbo because uh, this is going to be interesting for those of you who are going to turbocharge your Miata or uh, I don't know, like uh, an alternative for a KO4 upgrade turbocharger for a 180 or whatever because those are price-wise uh, cheaper or rather well, I guess not cheaper than maybe a used TD04 or whatever, but um, the quality is also much better. Yeah, I'm just gonna unpack now because uh, yeah, I don't wanna hold up, hold you up any longer. As I said, it's a Pulsar Turbo, so it's not an original Garrett. It is supposed to be a uh, knockoff uh, GBC. 2300 or 22 no no 2300 which is a replacement series for the gt25 series of turbochargers from garrett and they are supposed to handle between 200 horsepower at the smallest one up to 350 horsepower for the gbc 22 350 although uh, Pulsar only has two options available, which are this one, the 2300 and the 15200, I think. So you get some gaskets, uh, oil restrictor, or rather oil fitting. No, it's actually a restrictor. Those turbochargers are actually uh, not ball bearing, they are just a normal journal bearing. So rather than the older GT25 units, which were actually ball bearing. First of all, we have some installation guidance, um, which you probably won't really need. Uh, it says to prime your turbo and stuff before you start your engine. This, ha this means when you have installed the turbocharger, just make sure that it has oil pressure before you start the engine, because uh, otherwise it would run dry. Of course, as I mentioned, we have the gasket, so the T25 outlet and T25 uh, flange gasket. Um, they're just standard MLS gaskets, they work fine. And then we have the turbocharger. As you can see, it's much smaller than, for example, a um, GT28 or something. Obviously it is, because it is in general for a lot less power. Um, but, as I said, with this unit you can expect around 300 horsepower at the crank. Um, should be uh, also possible up to the, well, the maximum RPM of your car. I have tuned an Miata 1.6 with uh, the smaller version of this, so the 250. And I can tell you that it already worked better than a TD04. So I think those turbos are really a good alternative to the uh, old Subaru style because, yeah, they are just old now and they don't have as much exhaust volume that the exhaust turbine can flow because they are relatively restrictive. As you can see here, you still have a billet compressor wheel, which is a 9 blade, so basically the same as the GTX uh, Gen 2 or the uh, G series from Garrett. So the aerodynamics of this turbo are pretty good. And you have a also a 9 blade turbine, which is kind of where the magic happens with this. Uh, the housing AR is 0.55, which is not that small or rather not that big either. Depends on what you look at. Uh, the popular housing options on the GT28s were 0.64, which would be around that size. 
So as you can see, the housing in general is relatively small compared to the GT28, that's a 2871R, the Chinese knockoff. And uh, yeah, you can see that it's much smaller, but because of the 9 blade turbine, which is very efficient in flowing exhaust gas, you get relatively a relatively high volume of exhaust so you don't have the torque falling up uh, falling on its face on at the top which happens on the tto 4 turbos another thing which is interesting on those turbos is that they are not water cooled they're just oil cooled um, you have the standard oil inlet here which is obviously for this restrictor I actually would want to talk to Pulsar if you need to use that restrictor because on a journal bearing turbo you mostly don't need restrictors and especially on this one I would be kind of I would be comfortable running one because the oil volume you get with the restrictor is relatively small and without a restrictor you could get way better cooling and especially if you don't have a water cooling jacket it could be beneficial to run no restrictor but that also depends kind of on the oil pressure that the engine makes so i'm probably going to give you that info at a later date in the description or in the first pinned out pin on comment if you need to run that restrictor because that's a i think 0.9 millimeter restrictor which is used on the ball bearing turbochargers also but on this as i said i'm not that confident that you have to use it um, if you don't, you obviously have to get a different adapter if you want to run a dash line, for example, like a dash 4, which is recommended for a turbo feed. Um, most of the time, I think the feed is M11, point, uh, M11 uh, times 1. So, yeah. And we obviously have the standard T2 drain flange, which also there's a gasket here. You obviously don't get a drain flange, you have to get that yourself. Another thing that's kind of interesting on the um, turbos that are not original Garrett is that the uh, ports from the T25 flange are often not as big as the T25 flanges actually should be. As you can see here, I've ported the housing a bit to make the opening a bit big bigger. That could be also done here so that the restriction in the manifold or from the manifold to the turbo isn't that uh, well it's not that great for example if we take the t2 gasket and we put it on here you can see that there's an edge in here which is from the casting as well um, yeah you could grind that away and you would get a bit more flow out of it and uh, yeah, it would be a smoother transition between the manifold and the turbo. I'll do th I do that on all my turbos because it just makes sense, and uh, yeah, doesn't take much time, maybe half an hour, and yeah. Some info about the uh, actuator. That's a 0.5 bar actuator, but I've also have used the uh, as I said I've used uh, GBC 17250 on a Miata and that actuator was also supposed to be 0.5 bar so like 7 psi and we've tried to run it and it was spiking up to 1 bar or 40 psi which on a Miata engine could be quite dangerous because rod rods are very small as you can see here they're not really made for much boost in stock form so I would test the actuator beforehand how much PSI it actually makes um, before installing the turbo because if it actually makes like 0 0.8 or even 1 bar or 4, 12 to 14 PSI I would suggest uh, maybe getting a different actuator or whatever because overboosting can lead to quite heavy engine damage especially when not tuned for or especially when using a stock engine. I think on an MX-5 you're gonna expect around 270 horsepower with this. On a 1.6 and a 1.8 around 280 to 290. The Garrett horsepower ratings are quite a bit over the value that's gonna be reachable anyway. Um, 
which we've seen with the GTX Gen 2 line. Oh, the interesting thing is that with the uh, G25, G30 line and so on, we have seen that the horsepower ratings are getting better. So in a perfect scenario you actually can reach those horsepower numbers, but I'm not sure about the GPC line yet, so we'll have to look into that. One more thing that's actually also very good on these servos is that you can rotate the actuator and the compressor housing much better than on a TDO4 because on a TDO4 you're basically stuck on one position because you only have two bolts holding in the um, bracket for the actuator and on this you have long holes so that you can even yeah just slide it around on those uh, slits and you have multiple bolts on here as well so you have much more options and on the TDO4 it gets kind of tricky because you, if you are running the intercooler pipe downward to the uh, steering rack you can have problems with uh, routing intercooler piping uh, you can have problems with the actuator and then you that you can only use one board or whatever and uh, yeah that doesn't work as well which is quite a lot better here yeah that's basically it about this turbocharger um, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Um, I'm not sure yet if um, where I'm gonna use this one. Uh, I just got it for relatively cheap, that's why I got it in the first place. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you what this exactly is because um, I don't think a lot of people know about the GBC series, especially from Pulsar. This unit is around 500 euros. I mean, compared to the Garrett one, which is about 750 to 800 it's not that expensive or, or it's not that much cheaper but the quality of pulsar turbos are really good they have been they have been known to make good power and uh, last a long time even compared to garrett it doesn't make much of a difference on the wall bearing turbo charges the the difference is a lot higher price wise but yeah on this it's only like 300 euros but still I would say it's a fair price, even compared to like if you're using it in a, on a 180, a KO4 upgrade turbo, which is also rated at about 300 horsepower, is going to be a thousand euros or roundabout, and you can get away with this one probably quite a bit cheaper or for the same price. And you have newer technology, and you don't have the restrictive exhaust housing that you get on a KO3 turbo. Yeah, that's basically it. See you next time. Bye!